all right welcome back episode 25 invest info um this week i'm uh, gonna be speaking about the 16 rules uh for investment success uh really crafted by john templeton now john templeton was a notable notable investor because his rate of returns were insane over a 30 40 year period just consistently beating the s p 500 which is a very hard thing to do he's also famously known for on the brink of World War II, when everything seems most dire, he bought. Um, he told his uh, broker to buy 100 stocks uh, for a dollar. And um, <laughs> well, he took out a loan for ten thousand, <clears throat> which at the time, you know, converted for today would be about four hundred thousand. And he put it into these stank, uh, stocks that were about to go uh, bankrupt because of World War II. Everything seems. Uh, was on the verge of maximum pessimism, and he invested. And four years later, he had a, a small fortune. And this is sort of his style of investing, is really investing in crisis. Because the funny thing is, when it comes to the stock market, um, any other thing that's on sale, people rush in to buy it. But when stocks go on sale, people are fearful to buy it. And they do quite the opposite. They want to buy when the stocks are going to the moon, you know, and everything is really overpriced. And the reason most people do this is because they really don't know what they're buying. You know, it's it's a gamble, which investing as a whole ultimately is a gamble. But it's safer to buy a $5 bill with $1 than to buy a $5 bill with $10, right? So... Let's go into some of some of the things that John Templeton spoke about. And I want to say, look, this guy, you know, reading these guys and studying these guys, Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett, uh, John Templeton, um, Phil Town, these guys have experience. Anytime you want to put your effort towards something, seek advice from people that have been doing it for a very long time, the thing that you wish to pursue. And, we, and we're here to pursue investing, so we want to look at some of the greats. Now, I know you might see... Uh, you might get enticed by trades and that made you a million dollars in a week. And that's no different than somebody going to a casino and winning a pot or winning a scratch off. It's not real. That's, it's just gambling itself and you can lose it right away. So we want, we want to, we want to go with the guys that have been doing it, for, that have been in the game for a number of years. They didn't get wiped out. They, they had sound fundamentals and, and some, and you know, look, if you, are making really great returns in the stock market, you wouldn't have to look for anybody. People will look for you. So when, you know, you see these um, super active traders and all these types of things, ask them, you know, look for their track record. How have they been performed for, for the past year, two years, three years, you know? These guys have been doing this thing 40, 50, 60 years Peter Lynch, 30 years, 7 years of Magellan, 29% return every year. That's not easy, especially with the more money you manage. The more money you manage, the harder it is to get a return on your investment. <clears throat> All right, so let's start. All right, so the number one rule, um, it says invest for maximum total real return. It says this means a return on invested dollars after taxes and after inflation. This is the only rational objective of most long-term investors. So you want the most total return after taxes and after inflation on your investment. And you don't want to hold cash per se um, in, in terms of like a savings account because you're not getting any money return on your investment. You know, inflation alone is beating you. You know, the cost of... So you want to put your... Why do we put our money in stocks and real estate? Because... Um, they're a hedge against inflation. If prices are to go up, it's a business. So the business could increase the price of its goods and its services so they keep up with inflation. All right, so two, invest. Don't trade or speculate. Oh, man, I've, I've learned this from experience, the, 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 fall, the small experience I've had. You know, Joseph Carlson, Carlson, before I got into the stock market, he always have told us to avoid trading. Trading could be very risky, volatile, you know, buying, you know, options trading and, and these types of stuff, you know, 
Look, unless you're a seller of options, when you buy an option, you're really buying a depreciating asset. Time is working against you. You know, they have the Greeks, which is theta. This is the time factor. The, the, closer, this, the, the closer the option reaches to expiration, the less value it's worth. So it's like buying a melting ice cube. John Templeton is saying we should invest rather than trade. We're not going to be active. We're not going to be in and out. We're, our goal is to find the cheapest bargains. And, um, you know, before I read this, um, before I started to do this lesson, I said, I looked at an hour long video of John Templeton and this guy is long dead, uh, but it's just so much gems and things that pertain to things that are happening today. You know, we had our brief crisis in March. A lot of people left the market out of fear, and that was the opportune time to buy. And as the market bounces back and bounces back extremely fast, I start to realize that I wasn't a super genius. It was just very easy to invest. In, it was very easy to get a return on the investment in March. When the market's regularly, you know, there's no crisis going on, it's very hard to find bargains. Things get expensive really quickly. And most people just try to trade a momentum trade and go with the trend. But the reason Buffett, Phil, all these guys stress buying something at a margin of safety price is you want to keep staking the game. And it's not very easy to buy something that even you've done your homework, you know that it's really, for the valuation standpoint, it's worth 20 bucks. It is trading for two. It's very hard to keep buying this thing, you know? <clears throat> so don't speculate okay so it says the stock market is not a casino but most of us a lot of retail traders treat it as such but if you move in and out of stocks every time they move a point or two or if you continually sell, sell short or deal only in options or trade in futures the market will be your casino and like most gamblers you may lose eventually or frequently and the house always wins i mean trading it's i mean, i I've, I've traded and I've realized it's not a long-term strategy. You know, it's every, every time you trade, you're just gambling your money and there's no rhyme or reason for the stock market in the short term, in terms of price fluctuation, you know, to really be successful at this thing, you have to have a long-term horizon. You have to say, I'm going to put this money here and I'm not going to worry about it. What it's going to do in the next week or two or month or two, you know, it says you may find your profits consumed by commissions this is so true well commissions now most brokerages don't charge a commissions fee but there is taxes every time you trade and sell buy and sell you may find a market you expect it to turn down turning up and up and up in defiance of all your careful calculations and short sales every time a wall street news announces says this just in your heart will stop yeah so <laughs> it's funny how things don't change every let's take these vaccine stocks for, for example some of these vaccine companies and these pharmaceutical stocks aren't making any money yet they keep going up and up and up and if you were to short these vaccine stocks you'd been wiped out now the same thing happened in 2015 because of the Ebola the Ebola scare they went up and up and up and guess what they crashed for another four for another five years so we don't want to put our money in things like that we don't want to buy things we you know that we don't understand or just trade things if that's the case then you might as well just go to a casino or learn to play poker or something like that you know it says remain flexible and open mind open minded about types of investment yeah there's different types of investment you have your blue chip stocks as they mentioned uh corporate bonds real estate sometimes pretty much John Templeton's idea is whichever has the cheapest, whichever has the best bargain. Sometimes the cheaper bargain is to buy real estate property to get a return on your investment. Sometimes bonds is the way, but ideally speaking, it's going to be stocks. I mean, long-term stocks went out because you're buying parts of businesses and businesses grows despite inflation, you know, so it's normally the safest best, but don't rule your mind out of investing in other things than that. He also invested in foreign countries as well. Right now, things in China are really cheap. But China, I don't invest in China personally because, um, you know, they, it's not as thoroughly, they don't really, they could forge documents. You know, you invest in things, you know, I don't, I mean, I, I, I just rather stay, 
with a business here. I could see it. I could see how it's doing. I could, understand, I could see the management team. So, yeah, that was uh, number three. Number four, buy low. <laughs> Simple, yet not easy. Of course, you say that's obvious. Well, it may be, but that isn't the way the market works. When prices are high, a lot of investors are buying a lot of stocks. It's just so true. Prices are low when demand is low. Investors have pulled back. People are discouraged and pessimistic. And this is just an opportune time to invest. When the whole market gets like this, and this normally happens in a correction or some sort of crisis. You know, John Templeton during September uh, September 11th, 2001, um, you know, when the Twin Towers fell, um, John Templeton bought airline stocks. Now, how many people could do that? I mean, at the time when that happened, the idea of flying again was just, just no, like people were saying, look, we're never going to fly again. And man, airline stocks plummeted and John Templeton went to look to see which companies he think would survive, which has the cheapest valuation and they just buy, you know? So that's not easy to do. Um, buying things low. Cause when you, when you, when you're buying something low, often people don't want it and it's, not so much that you're contrarian, you are. It is contrary in 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 a uh, in approach, but really it's because you know you did your homework and your your facts are right. So it's not about going with or against the crowd. It's are your facts correct, as Buffett would say. It says when almost everyone is pessimistic at the same time, the entire market collapse. More often, just stocks in particular uh, fields fall. Industries such as automaking and casualty insurance go through regular cycles. Some sometimes stocks of companies like the thrift uh, institutions or money center banks fall out of favor all at once. So, <sighs> buying things on sale in the stock market for some reason is completely different than when you go into a supermarket and something's on sale. You're eager to buy it, or you go to your favorite retailer uh, and they're going. They have a clearance sale. They're going out of business. You buy as much as you can. But when it comes to the market, it's very different because there's an emotional stake there. And um, we sort of have to learn to rule our emotions, not be overstimulated. It's, these things are, that I'm saying are quite simple, but in practice, it's not easy. Uh, number five, when buying stocks, search for bargains among quality stocks. Right. So not often do quality stocks go on bargains. Again, this normally happens in a crisis. And... Some of the investors I mentioned, such as Phil Town, Warren Buffett, these guys will sit in cash and just wait and wait and wait and wait <laughs> till that stock falls to a price that puts it on a bargain. Uh, Charlie Munger says, um, you know, instead of going into a store and, and looking for sales on just buying everything cheap, he'll go in the store, look, for, look at an item he likes and keep going back to that store till that item falls to the price that he likes. So... For Apple and Facebook and Google, Amazon to fall like they did in March. Um, man, that was a huge bargain. Um, those are quality companies. Not easy. To, not easy for those things to come along. It's it's not easy easy to find uh, quality stocks on bargains. Generally speaking, you know, because corrections happen or bear markets happen about every six to ten years. Buy value, not market trend or the economic outlook, right? So John Templeton, being the bargain hunter he is, you know, he doesn't, he's not necessarily looking at a bear market or a bull market. He's just looking for buy what's cheap. And sometimes you might buy uh, something cheap in a bull market and you'd have to wait another bear market and wait for that bull market to return to really see if you're right or not, the minimum holding of Templeton's investment was five, six years. And not because he wanted it to be five to six years. He said he minimally held it at that time because that's normally what it took on average for people to realize um, the particular investment that they bought is true value. So sometimes when I'm buying these things and, I, you know, it keeps going down, it keeps going down. I, you know, I look back at these guys that, you know, these greats and 
the patience that they have, you know, because they truly know what they're buying. It's almost like, you know, when you, if gold, uh, at one point was $35, nobody wanted gold at $35. Now gold is trading at, uh, 1800 bucks. So it's, it's sort of like that. If you could see the future value of gold, it'll constantly go up. Even though it's a speculative asset, you can see the future value of it. You just keep buying it and you don't care what anybody else sees because you understand it. So buy the value, not market trends. Right now, Tesla and I mean, there's just so many trending companies, but these companies are trading at enormous price to earnings ratios. You know, something is trading at a thousand PE. That means if you put in one dollar, you'd have to wait a thousand years to get back your return on that one dollar. The price to earnings for some of these uh, companies are insane, even though they might have high growth rate. You know, a lot of people will, when it comes to technology, rather use a peg ratio because, you know, technology grows a lot faster. However, technology has a lot of competition. You know, Nokia in the 90s sold more phones than Apple and Samsung combined. And, you know, due to the competitiveness, they, they fell and didn't recover back to their uh, 90 stock prices of 50, 60 bucks, you know. So it's a lot of competition when it comes to technology. Diversify in stocks and bonds as in much else. There is safety in numbers, right? So diversification. When we find uh, stocks that are on sale, we try to we want to find a basket of a basket of stocks, maybe about six max of companies we understand that are on sale. Um, just to keep a hedge in the game, you know, we, we can't predict the future. Uh, John Templeton will tell you he made a ton of mistakes. Uh, Peter Lynch. Uh, Warren Buffett, these guys are guys that had companies go to zero on them, even though they did their homework. So the way you keep skinning the game is, you know, you might have two, three stocks, um, 10 maybe. I mean, it's it's just hard to find them. But if you can find them, again, these opportunities become easy in a crisis. And, you know, good news is um, Buffett, Phil, they're sitting a whole bunch of cash waiting for this next huge crash to happen because it will happen. And that's when you load up the bucket. So right now is a good time to be, you know, just kind of on the sidelines and don't get really caught up in the trends as uh, Templeton says, looking to make a quick buck because often you'll lose it. You'll, you'll definitely lose it. If, if, this, if that was the approach to take, these guys would know it. Um, but after 40 and 60 years of investing, they're telling you the, the sound way and, and, and it will always be the sound way is to just buy a stock that's on sale. Can't go wrong with that. It's like the safest way to gamble if you will is to buy some put uh, buy a ten dollar bill with five bucks do your homework or hire wise experts to help you yeah understand what you own Und do your homework on a company these are companies it's not a lottery ticket as peter lynch would say and it says a hire wise experts uh monash for speaks about cloning um now i did a lesson on srg Saratage gross properties i didn't do a particular lesson on it but i mentioned it srg and the stock went from seven, it's trading at 17. And these are stock, this is a stock that Monash, Phil, uh, and Buffett are in. You know, these great gurus. So they did the homework for you. And they're, those are those wise experts. So with the S, the S, uh, with the SEC filings, um, you could kind of look at what these great investors are buying. And there's no shame in cloning it. You know, these guys are, they have an, an, a, a great amount of consultants. Um, they have experience, and there's nothing wrong with cloning them. <clears throat> Number nine, aggressive, aggressively monitor your investment. Um, let's see what it says. Expect and react to change. No bull market is permanent. No bear market is permanent. And there are no stocks that you can buy and forget. The pace of change is too great being, re being uh, relaxed as Hooper advised, doesn't mean being complacent. Consider, for example, just the 30 issues that comprise the Dow Jones industries from 1978 through 1990. One of every three issues changed because the company was declined or was acquired or went private or went bankrupt. Look at the 100 largest indus industrials on Fortune magazine's list in just seven years, 1983 through 1990, 30 dropped off the list. 
they merge with other giant companies or become too small or the top 100 or were acquired by a foreign company or one or one went private or went out of business remember no investment is forever right so each quarter check up on your company um, that's what the earnings report are for uh, every quarter a company releases its annual uh, its quarterly uh, reports and you can listen to these things for free I mean I always try to listen to the company I'm invested in and see what the management is saying see you know what are they doing you got to treat this the business like you own it uh, because you do you have part ownership in it um, so that's what they mean by aggressively monitor your investment uh, doesn't necessarily mean every single day you're checking the price of things but you know you keep an eye on your business just like you know you if you own the a shop you you know pass by it how's the how's it going today how's the week been how's the month been the same thing with your stocks you know number 10 don't panic man now I spoke about being emotional and uh, panicking is emotional and it's it happens you know you buy a stock and it falls 30 40 percent it's not easy to hold um, first thing you want to know is is it going to solve it um, and you don't really know when the bottom is so that's where that everything comes back full circle of doing your homework um, really doing your homework because if you again understand what you're buying you won't panic um, also in a crisis when everything is going down a lot of people tend to panic they see their 401k sliced in half uh, it's not easy um, Joseph Carlson had a friend that uh, his portfolio dipped about 125,000 during the uh, 2008 uh, housing crisis and he just waited and just kept investing in that same portfolio is close to a million dollars a day he just stuck with it uh, number 11 learn from your mistakes yes we're gonna make many um, so many I mean almost like you are always gonna make mistakes when it comes to the, the market um, but you have to learn from them and they make you wiser uh, they make you more sound and that's why it's good to go to people with experience because the people with experience has made many mistakes begin with begin with a prayer um, John Templeton he was a very uh, religious man um, you know, somebody asked him, do you pray for stocks to go up? He laughed and chuckled and said, that would be foolish. We rather, we don't pray for stocks to go up, but we rather, like Solomon, pray for wisdom. And, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, 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 I have to agree with that. You have to pray for wisdom when it comes to, um, uh, making these investments, making sure you're making wise decisions and making sure God is guiding you, uh, with your money you know because you could lose it all a lot of people have even people have that have that you see that are, success, are successful they made many mistakes and has, and has lost it lost it all learn from their mistakes and came back and um, a big part of everything is just praying so it says if you begin with a prayer you can think more clearly and make fewer mistakes and John Templeton was big on that he was very uh, very religious even on uh, in an hour-long video when I watched it you know he stressed uh, prayer Number 13, outperforming the market is a difficult task. This is so true. I uh, did a lesson on in the the index and beating the index, how very hard it is to beat the index. Most money managers can't do it. And most people that have mutual funds, uh, by the time they take their percentage, I mean, you're not being S&P 500. It's really just the safest thing to do is just to buy the S&P. Um, if you're going to try to beat the market, just understand what it you know the, the task is not a, is not an easy one the reason these guys were so successful templeton and buffett and these other investors that have these crazy annual returns is they uh you know they they do their homework and um they just have a different mentality you, you just you have to mentally sort of prepare yourself for the volatility the emotions the trends the news everything um you have to sort of be mentally fortified for whatever the market throws at you and to make almost machine-like decisions and speaking of machine-like that's what the S&P 500 when it's trading is trading like a machine it's not trading with emotions um, number 14 an investor who has all the answers does doesn't even understand all the questions it says a cocksure approach to investing will lead probably sooner than later to disappointment, if not outright disaster. 
even if we can identify an unchanging handful of investment principles, we cannot apply these rules to an unchanging universe of investments or an unchanging economic and political environment. Everything is in a consistent state of change. And the wise investor recognizes that success is a process of continually seeking answers to new questions. Right. Be open to learn uh, pretty much. Um, always got to be a sponge soaking information. You can't have the approach that you understand everything. Um, because these businesses are rapidly changing and you have to be able to understand uh, the future. Um, constantly watch videos on how to. Invest your money, trends, and, and these things. <clears throat> There's no free lunch, number 15. The principle covers an endle- This principle covers an endless list of admissions. Uh, admonitions, sorry. Never invest on sentiment. <laughs> right, never invest on sentiment. So, you know, going by what an analyst says on a stock or what a this stock may do or that suck. You know, analysts, you have short sellers that create analyst reports because they have interest in the stock going down or vice versa. could have interest in the stock going up. Just do, just do your homework and, and, and go based on your facts. Says the company that gave you your first job or built the first car you have ever owned or sponsored a favorite television show a long ago may be a fine company. But that doesn't mean it's a stock is a fine investment. Even if the corporation is truly excellent, prices of its shares may be too high. Again, don't trade with emotions. Don't buy this company because you love it. Buy it because it's on a sale. Buy it because it's on a bargain. Uh, Templeton, he was known for being just a bargain hunter with everything. I mean, not even buying certain cars because it was too overpriced. This guy was all about valuation all the way till his end. I mean, he was a bargain hunter through and through. And these guys, by the way, they stayed away from Wall Street. Warren Buffett in Omaha, this guy, he, his return became even more great when he moved to the Bahamas because he got away from Wall Street. He got away from the news. Uh, Monash, he doesn't trade when the market's open. He, he doesn't buy when the market's open. He buys when it's closed to not overstimulate his mind. So these are some of the things that these great investors do. Really just avoid the crowd and just stick to the fundamental principles of what they've been taught before the great investors before them. Number 16, do not be fearful or negative too often. And now the last principle, do not be fearful or negative too often for 100 years of optimism have carried the day in U.S. stocks. The market is more bull, bullish than it is bearish. Eventually stocks go up. I mean, it's just businesses. Businesses grow. Even in the dark 70s, many professional money managers, as many money mo- Many professional money managers and many individual investors, too, made money in stocks, especially those of smaller companies. There will, of course, be corrections, perhaps even crashes. But over time, our studies indicate stocks do go up and up and up. This is true. Betting against the S&P 500 is a failed. uh, It's a failed investment. I mean, even the volatility index in the long term has been trending downwards are the VIX because over, overall optimism on the long term wins out when it comes to the markets because these companies do go up so you can watch videos with uh, John Templeton they're, all, they're online if you want to hear more of him speak his niece Laura Templeton she also has a Templeton fund and uh, I think one of their sayings is um uh, trouble is opportunity. So this is <laughs> that will kind of give you the mindset of how these guys approach investing. They're buying when no one else wants to buy. And when everybody else is buying, they're on the sidelines waiting, looking for bargains. All right, so that was episode 25, and I'll see you guys on the next one.